Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial series on modern C++. In this video tutorial, we explain the three use cases of range-based for loops in C++, and let's immediately start. First of all, we will briefly summarize the three most common use cases, and then later on, we will start with coding. First of all, to make this presentation less complex and more clear, let's declare a vector of doubles and let's call it array and let's initialize it with four values over here. Here are the three use cases of range-based for loops. We write four, then we write auto x, and then we write the object name or the, the uh, container name, in our case it's array one, and then inside over here you will write some code. So the idea over here that x iterates over the elements of array 1 and in a single iteration x is a copy of an element of array 1. That is, x becomes 1.2, then in the next iteration x becomes 3, then in the next iteration x becomes minus 2, and in the final iteration x becomes 7. However, here you should keep in mind that with this way of formulating the um, range base for loop, x is a copy of an actual element inside of the array 1. That is, x does not represent the actual element, but instead a copy is being stored in x. This is very important if, for example, over here you have some objects of a classes or instant instances of a classes, for example, every object can be 10 megabytes. So in every iteration, whenever you do something with X, a copy constructor will be called, and this might consume memory and computational times. And consequently, this approach of formulating and using for loops is only applicable or it should be used for simple data types such as integers or doubles. Here's the second use case. Here we write 4, then over here we type auto with the reference symbol x, and then we specify array 1, and then inside we can write some code. Over here x iterates over the elements of array 1, and in a single iteration x is a reference to an element of array 1. Again x will take values of 1.2, then in the next iteration 3, then in, in the next iteration minus 2.0, and in the next iteration 7. However, the difference between 2 and 1 is that x is actually a reference or an alias of a particular element. That is, by changing x over here, we can change the actual element that's being stored in array 1. However, in the first case, that is in this case, if we change x over here, the original elements will be, uh, will stay the same. This is because x is a copy. One big advantage of 2 over 1 is that over here, a copy constructor is not being called. That is, x is a reference. And this is way more efficient approach for writing and executing these type of loops compared to case number one. And here is the case number three. In case number three, we write four, then we specify const auto, then the reference x, and then array one. Here x iterates over the elements of array one, and in a single iteration, x is a const reference to an element of array one. The advantage of the three um, of the case number three compared to the case number one is that over here x is a const reference and here we are actually not calling a copy constructor that is if we want to print the entries of array one we will use this approach since it's very and better to say it's more efficient compared to the approach number one and that's a brief summary of the three most common use cases of course there are more use cases, however, these are the three most important. And in the sequel, we are going to explain how to write a code. Okay, let's start with coding. Let's create a new file, click on File, New File, and let's call the file as case1.cpp. And let's save the file over here. Let's start with the standard includes. 
first of all, we need to include vector since we will be using vector and then we need to include input output string, IO string, since we will, we will be printing some messages and numerical values. Next, let's start with, with our int main function. Here it is. And let's return a zero over here. First of all, let's declare and initialize our vector. So let's type std vector. Then over here, let's go with the double. And then let's call the vector as array one and let's initialize it with some values. For example, you can write 1.2, 3, minus 2.0, and let's write 7 over here. First, we will explain the first use case. And the first use case looks like this. You write 4 and then you write auto x. This is automatic data type deduction keyword. You can also write, for example, in this case, double. However, auto is more elegant. And then let's write array 1. Here, what will happen? Whatever you do inside of this loop, x will be iterated. x will start from 1.2, then it will switch to 3, then it will switch to minus 2.0, then it will finally go to 7. And so, let's print the entries to demonstrate that this thing works. Oops, let's do this, see out, and then the number is, and then let's do this, and then let's print x, and then let's do this, std and line. Okay, that's it. And let's save this file, okay? Let's go back to the terminal, and over here I'm going to use GCC a compiler to compile it. However, you can use any other compiler. So let's keep in mind the name of the file, okay, case1, and then let's type something like this. Over here, the name of the executable will be case1, and the name, or actually the name of the source file will be case1, and the name of the executable will be case1. And if I run this, the file is uh, compiled, and build and if I write case one you can see that we are printing the entries inside of array one however here again X is a copy of a particular element and to show you that and to convince you that that's the case let's try to do this experiment let's try to double the entries of array one by using X so let's type this for auto X array one and then inside, let's try to write something like this. Okay, here we want to double. And then finally, let's see and let's investigate. Were we able to double it? This is very important. However, over here, I will simply type something like this. And then I want to end the line. So let me now just type this, see out, end the line. So I can make separation between uh, these, two, uh, these two loops. Here we will print, then we will try over here to, uh, here I need to do std, so don't forget to do this. Then over here, I will try to double, then I will make a new line, and actually here I need to correct this. So correct this such that there is no error, there is no error right now. So over here, I doubled, then I'm making a new line, and then I'm trying to print again the entries of x. People who are not familiar with uh, range-based for loops will think that you can manipulate the array entries like this. And as you can see, you will not be able to do that. So let's save this. Let's go to the terminal, let's compile again, and let's run case one. And you can see what happened. This is the, these are the entries of the original array. And over here, we tried to double. However, as you can see over here, we were not able to double. The reason for this is that X is a copy of an element or a copy of values of this array one are stored in X and that's why we cannot do it and here again 
If, for example, array one consists of objects of classes, and these objects are huge, for example, 10 megabytes, every time you write something like this, a copy constructor will be called that will copy all the member variables and everything stored in that object inside of the X. And this will consume computational and memory time and space. Okay, now that we understand the first use case, let's explain the second use case. Let's create the second file and let's call this file as case2.cpp and let's save this file. Then let's copy this part over here and then let's close main and let's return zero. Let's also copy this declaration and initialization over here and let's define the second for loop. The for loop looks like this. We type again auto. However, over here, you need a reference symbol and then X and then in array one. So what, what is happening right now? Here, in contrast to the first case, X is a reference to an element inside of array one. That is, by changing X, we can actually change the entries or the elements of array one. And one very important thing happens is that we are not copying the entries since X is a reference or an alias. This is very, very important to th thing to keep in mind. And then let's write this STD, see out the number is, then let's type X and then let's type this STD and line. That's it. And this will work. Let's test it, save it, go back to the terminal over here and type this. Here I'll be use case two and let's compile this and let's run case two. And as you can see, we can print out the entries. Now let's look and let's explain the true power of writing this for loop in this way. Let's say that we want to modify the entries of array one. Not a big deal. Here again, I will copy this part. And then over here, I will simply say x is equal to x multiplied by 2. Here, we will double the entries of array 1. And then finally, let's print out the entries by repeating this loop. And over here, let's add the standard and line and I'm going to copy it from here and paste it here. Good. Now we can save this and let's see what happens. If we go now to the terminal, we can compile everything and if we write case 2, voila, magic happens. You can see that we have successfully doubled the entries of array 1. And finally, let's explain the third use case. The third use case is very simple, namely, let's say that you just want to observe the entries of array one. What's wrong with this approach over here? Well, in this approach, since X is a reference to array one, you might somehow modify X. And let's say that you don't want to do that. Let's say that you just want to print it out. In that case, you need to use const auto. And this is the second approach. To explain this second approach, let's create a new file. And let's call this file as case3.cpp. Let's save it. And again, let's copy the things that are necessary. We need this part. Then let's close our main loop. Let's return zero over here or main function to be more precise the idea over here is the same you will simply write for however inside of the for loop you will type const auto then reference then x and then array one so the difference over here is that we are using references and in this way we are avoiding copying the values. However, we are specifying const. Const means that you cannot modify the actual original element. So 
To show you that, let's now write std cout cout something like this. The number is, and then let's print out x, and then let's do std and line, and that's it. So let's save this, and then let's go back to the terminal. Let's try to compile this. Again, you will write something like this. And then let's try to run it. Here it is. Now, let's do a test. Let's try to modify the entries inside of Array1 by using this approach. So over here, we can try something like this. x is equal to times x. Aha. Uh -huh. Expression must be a modifiable L of value. So there is an issue over here. Let's try to compile this and let's see what the compiler will tell us. Aha, uh -huh. you can see over here, error assignment of read only reference X and this is the issue. And here you can see the power of const out references, they prevent you to modify the original array. And this is very important if you just want to observe and print the values without modifying them. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.